Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to freehand skulls and bones. If you'd like to support the channel, our coffee and Patreon page is linked below. And now on to the video. So like with everything when I'm freehanding, I always try and break up the image into certain parts. So to do a skull, I'll do like a circle. It's usually slightly oval shaped. Two little triangles beneath that. And that represents where the cheekbones are. And if you draw like a rough kind of triangle from the center of the circle down to the bottom, you get roughly where you want to have your teeth and square them off a little bit. Add the teeth to the bottom because that's like the top jaw there. And then what I'll do is do a small triangle. You can do it open-ended or open-bottomed if you need to in the middle there. And you're doing another triangle for the right eye, another triangle for the left eye. Now, if you look at that, that's just circles and triangles. So like the previous freehand video, it's just circles and straight lines. So when I'm drawing this ordinarily, you can see how if you're just drawing it freehand, where those angles are, and where those shapes are. Slightly bigger on the one on the right. But you can see how it comes about like that, and it's just a bit of practice on working out roughly where you want those triangles, and where you want those circles. Now for the eyes, I'll always draw them like a circle, and then just add on that curved part at the bottom, and a curved part at the end there. That is an easy way to get that rough eye or lens shape when you're trying to freehand that. You do that for both directions. They're usually both slightly different, but when you come to actually paint it on, you can tweak those and get those in the right way. So in practice, what does that look like? Well, we're going to use Citadel Rakarth Flesh and we're going to freehand the skull and some bones onto the shoulder pad. Just to give you an example of how to paint those on. So the skull is going to be the circle that we've just done, like more of an oval shape. As always, I find it a lot easier doing the bottom left corner of a circle. So I always try and do it that way. This time I'm just doing a kind of rough circle there. Fill that in with the Rakarth flesh and that is going to be the circle, which is the main bulk of the skull. And like we did on the last one. Once you've got this neatly filled in. We're now going to add the little triangle on the left hand side. That's slightly too lower down so we're just going to join it onto the triangle on the right hand side too. Like so. And then doing that angled jaw piece is going to come out at the bottom. So where those top row of teeth is paint that on like so. So it's only very rough this because we are going to come on and tweak it with different colours and then at the end we're going to go and reshape it with a little bit of black to get that colour there. I'm just going to do a rough knee and shin too. So do two little triangles and a straight line down. And this is how I do the bones of the leg. On the other side when I'm doing hands and feet I'm just doing four straight lines and four little triangles at the top. Now the triangles at the top tends to be just pressing the tip of the brush down on that. So now I'm going to use a little touch of Vallejo black. Obviously any black will do or whatever colour you're doing on the background. So here we are going to be doing the eyes. So like we did before we're going to do that triangle and then just put the little gentle curve on that bottom right hand corner of it. And the same when we do the left eye, you're going to do the triangle again. Just doing that curve on the bottom left corner. And once you've got the basic shape on there, you can tweak them to however you want them to. Look. And for the nose, we're just going to do one line down and one line down to give that almost like a triangle with a little jet of skull colour in the middle there, a little spike of that. Which you can add afterwards, you don't have to worry about that straight away. And I'm going to use Citadel Seraphim Sepia. I'm just going to go over all of the bones like you would do if it was molded onto the miniature and that's how we're going to approach painting them so with that now dry we're moving back to Ricard flesh and when we start adding the color back to the skull you want to be thinking about where on the miniature if it was molded onto it those highlights will be going so you want to get around the top of each eye the cheekbones, the top of the skull, you're going to have a little bit going around the back there 
and a little bit of shade between the eye and the right hand side and the far left hand side of the skull because that'd be where the temple goes in then you'd have the highlighted part at the back of that if it's easier to do when you are painting stuff like this and you're freehanding things i often find it depending on what i'm painting easier to have an actual model of it or the image of what you're painting so that you can roughly put on where those highlights and where those colors are going back on if you're doing something like a skull you've got skulls on so many different kinds of miniatures especially if you're doing imperial forces and things like that you'll have skulls all over the shop so you can look at when you've painted one in bone colors normally just have a look at that alongside the one that you're freehanding and you'll be able to work out where that is and where you want those highlights and where you want that color to go back on and where to leave the shades now on this you can see that the right hand side of the teeth sticks out a little bit further than the left hand side of the teeth there so what we're going to do is start highlighting the teeth leaving a big section of the original Rakhar flesh and shade on the right hand side of that right hand tooth and the reason we're doing that is because we can just trim that down with black at the end once you've finished doing all this again the same with the shin bones if you've got a skeleton miniature you can paint that and then just look at where the highlights will be and where the colour would be in the shades and then just sort of copy that onto this so always think of like the toes and fingers you're going to have a rough colour of it with bits of shade just below the very top and just below the very bottom and the same with those shin bones too so the first highlight we're going to add some citadel ushabti bone i'm going to pick out the areas where we'd be highlighting on a normal molded skull or cast skull That top of the nose is quite prominent. So it's got the top of the skull. I'm doing this like the Legion of the Dan chap, so he had the arm raised up to hold the bolter, and so the highlighting was on the left hand side of the skull. So I'm going to paint it like the same as that Legion of the Dan chap, so that you can see how I approach that. Again, the top of the cheekbones are going to have the highlights if you were painting it on something molded onto the miniature itself rather than just doing it freehand with the teeth because they are so small i'm not really too bothered about where the highlights go on them as long as the you have a little bit of each color on that's pretty good to go so for the shin bones i'm just doing a few little rough highlights going down those and for the kneecap i'm doing a crescent at the top of that with these little bones of the fingers and toes we're just going to do the top and the bottom of each of the bones and then we're also going to do a slight little bit in the middle too I'm just extending some of those highlights just to get a bit more colour there's a bit of a blob of it there but once you've started highlighting that that'll be fine next colour we're just going to use plain Ushabti bone we're just going to again highlight this as it was on the actual model so you want to be doing the tops of those cheekbones and just underneath the eye because that's where you would be highlighting on the model so the light would be coming down from above or the side and you would be catching those details If you go over any of the black areas like the eyes or the nose like you'll notice as i go along the nose progressively gets smaller and smaller because i'm keep nudging some of the colors in there but that's not a problem we can just go back to that and just redo that once we've finished so for the shin bones there we're just highlighting the same areas but in a smaller space and the same again on the toes you just want to be adding a little bit to highlight leaving the previous layers showing Now we're going to mix a little bit of Vallejo white or whichever white you tend to use. Mix that with Ushabti bone so that you now get that final highlight. You're just going to pick out the details as you would do on the models and put those highlights on. And 
Now, if you wanted to do more and more layers to get this a lot smoother, you can do that. This is only a very quick and pretty easy method of doing this. So you're only using, in total, about four colours, maybe, over about six or seven layers. We'll pick out the details again, where you want to have those highlights. I'm doing the front of the skull, as I would normally highlight it, and putting the main highlights on the top of the skull, as though the light is coming from the left. Now onto the bones, so we're doing the top of those triangles at the bottom, the top of the triangles at the top as well, and then that half circle over the kneecap, and a few little spots on the actual shin bones. And for the hands or toes, we're just doing little spots of the final highlight on the very top of those bones, and the bottom of the bones, and maybe the odd little spot on some of the lengths of them. So finally, we're going to be using a little bit of Vallejo Black just to tidy up the edges now. You're redoing that nose, so you've got that sort of two-line triangle going on. Here I've added a little bit too much black, so I'm using some of the previous mix just to touch that eye up. And again, using the black to touch up the right-hand side of those teeth and the jaw, and around that face if you've got any rough edges or between the bones. You can just tidy that up and get that nice and smooth so it looks nice and crisp. Now for the fingers, I tend to just do a line going between them, the length of them and then a line going between the width of them as well so you've got those nice crisscross lines of the bones all lined up. And with that you have the freehand skull and bones finished. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support us our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.